Welcome to Unfiltered, the big interview. I am your host, Otega Ogra, and today we are going to be speaking with Dr. Vincent Olatunji, the CEO of the Nigerian Data Protection Commission. In an age where data is called new oil, you know, Dr. Olatunji's role is key in ensuring that, you know, Nigeria's data protection is safe um, and that we can navigate the complex nature of of data protection and privacy, as well as regulations. Um, and as Nigeria's digital economy expands, um, so the concerns about data security, how our data is used, amongst other things. Today, we'll delve into the policies, the challenges, and the future plans of the commission under Dr. Latunji's leadership. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Dr. Latunji, um, as head of the Nigerian Data Protection Commission, um, what is your overarching vision for data protection in Nigeria? And how do these goals, you know, how do they align with the broader national digital economy framework and strategy? And what are your immediate um, priorities? Uh, thank you very much. As really mentioned, the whole world has got digital and uh, in interacting with one another, either for businesses, for sports, for socials, and for practically everything, we live a digital footprint in terms of our names, our telephone numbers, bank accounts, house addresses, social media platforms, anything that could be used to identify us as natural persons. And there's every need for such information about us, which is our personal data, to be safeguarded, to be protected, and processed within the provisions of the law in any country, which speaks to data protection laws across the globe. And the way we interact these days, has given a lot of concern to all big job players in the sector that if deliberate measures are not put in place, if deliberate actions are not put in place to ensure appropriate safeguards, there are serious implications to human beings in terms of financial loss, in terms of reputational loss, in terms of even damage to body organs, in terms of death in extreme cases. And that is why attention is, global attention is now focused on now to protect personal information and personal data. And Nigeria, since we started the journey, I want vision here within this commission to have a country whereby the personal data of an average Nigeria is safe, is secured, and processed within the provision of the Nigeria Data Protection Act, which was signed into law by President Bola Ahmed Tudumbo on the 12th of June, 2023. Between where we started and now, we've gained a lot of traction in terms of letting data subjects, that is you and I, over 200 million Nigerians, to know our rights as data subjects in Nigeria. Also, for data controllers and processors, that is those who collect our data, and process all data from one thing to another, to know their obligations to us as citizens of this country. And one interesting thing about our own law in Nigeria is the fact that the scope is wide. If you're a data controller or data processor, you are domiciled in Nigeria, you process the personal information of Nigerians, you are within scope. And on the other hand, if you're a data controller or a data processor, domiciled outside Nigeria, you process the data of an average Nigerian, you are within scope. So it has a very broad scope to ensure that the identities, the rights, freedoms, and interests of all Nigerians adequately protected when they share their personal data. So our vision is to ensure that we have, we take full charge and ensure proper implementation of the law, which will lead to compliance. And we have started with awareness and do a lot of things to ensure that Nigerians understand what we are trying to do in this country. And in terms of the international communities, seeing Nigeria as a country, that is ready to, for digital business, we are there'll be trust and confidence in the digital economy. And more importantly, look at Mr. President, he drew the agenda. Look at all the eight pillars there. You talk of food security, you talk of uh, economic development and job creation, you talk of inclusivity, you talk of rule of law, you talk everything. And you now also look at the blueprint of the Ministry of Communications, Innovation and the Digital Economy. You talk of knowledge, you talk of policy, you talk of infrastructure, you talk of trade, entrepreneurship, and capital, all these things 
will still have components of identity. Without components of digital identity or personal identity, we will be able to achieve any of this. So it's really important and is an important part, an important component of the National Digital Economy Blueprint and Mr. President Radio Over Agenda. And more importantly, that we're not talking of having a digital identity ecosystem, mm. which is the foundation of any digital economy across the globe. So it's really important that we put in place measures to safeguard the data of Nigerian citizens. And that is why we have, that is what we have, the Nigerian Data Protection Act, signed by Mr. President on the 12th of June 2023. So I need to understand because I know we already, already had some bodies, you know, managing data and all that. So based on the act, you know, what are the key regulations that are currently um, governing data policies? And not just that, I heard you talking, you know, about the law, you know, the scope and all that. I hear you talking about awareness. I hear you talking about, you know, compliance. I hear you talking about getting user buy-in and properly delineating the ecosystem. So what are those regulations that people ought to be aware of, one? And then how is the commission itself ensuring compliance amongst businesses, government agencies, aggregators, like you said, and are there penalties for, you know, breaching any of these regulations? Uh, thank you. I, I think the first thing is to look at the law itself. For instance, what we did, Mr. President signed the law, the bill to a law, to a law we developed a roadmap you know, of five pillars, which we probably aligned with the eight pillars of the Renewable Agenda and the five pillars of the blueprint of mutual communication and digital. And the number one thing there in the in the in the blueprint that we developed is the issue of that speaks to policies, governance, and like what kind of governance structure do we have for data privacy and protection in Nigeria? We speak to the law. Now we now expect individual ministry, department, agencies of government, individual private sector organizations who are data controllers and processors to now develop their own internal governance structure which speaks to their policies. And the policies relate to the regulation that you're talking about. That is what kind of policies we have as a data collecting entity which speaks to who you are, the type of data you collect, how you collect, how you process, how you share, how you store. Is there anything like cross-border transfer of data? All these things will be put together in your policy, which is an extension of the law which has been put in place in Nigeria, and the extension of regulations which will be also available from the law. Because one thing that the law has done is to about to issue regulation. For instance, in the area of emerging technologies, which most countries that had their law like 10, 20 years ago, never have said, like the uh, Internet of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, big data, the law empowers to issue regulation. So, we issue regulation based on the subject matter you are addressing. It may be for agri, for instance, which is a sector. It may be for act, earth, which is a sector. It may be for education. So, we are empowered to issue regulation in these different areas. Now, what do we want to achieve with the regulations? Should be the next thing, which speaks to the rights of data subjects in this case, that is, your right as a data subject that any organization collecting your data will seek your consent. You should willingly and freely give your consent to any organization that is collecting your data. And it should be affirmative that yes, I've authorized you to collect my data to use it for A, B, C, and D purposes. That is one, your right to be informed. That is, they're telling you why you want to use that data. Your right to rectification. If there's any inaccuracy in the data they've collected, which are processed, you have the right to say, okay, please rectify my data. This what you have is not correct. Right to portability, that is, you want to move your data from data uh, controller to the other. Right of erasure, that is, okay, I'm no more doing business with you. Please remove my data from the database completely. Right of refusal for profiling. That is, they want to profile you, for instance, they want to know your spending pattern. It is your right to say, no, I don't want that. And even in a law, which is unique to us, apart from what the general laws in other, in other claims, your right to report to the commission. That is, if there is unauthorized, unauthorized use of your data, any unauthorized access to your data, any data breach, 
you have the right to report to the commission. So we have a lot of regulations that we can issue in these areas. And also on the part of data controllers and processors, we can also issue regulations. For instance, your data controller, your data processor, what measures have you put in place to say, regard the data with you, the data with you. Because you was that duty of care, which is referred to as accountability. Mm -hmm. That is an average data controller, an average data processor is accountable for any data in his database. And that is why it's a big thing that all over the world that if you're a data controller and a data processor, you must put in place safeguards, appropriate safeguards, and that technical organizational measures to ensure that soil data is with you because you're held accountable for that data with you. And these are areas that we issue regulations. Okay, for the benefit of you know the public that is listening, I would like us to break down these concepts, data controller, you know, data processor. Now, what am I saying? So let's assume, for instance, I am a supermarket, a young person that owns a supermarket or a clothing line or whatsoever. You come into my business and I say, oh, give us your foot name and phone number, you know, so that we we'll print out your invoice or your receipts. And I do that. And afterwards, I start to receive, you know, text messages, sales messages oh, and things like that. messages. Yes. Can you, this scenario, can we break it down yeah. as to the responsibility? Because that's my data that I've given, yeah. you know, maybe we consent to do one thing, but I'm getting Easy something fast. else. Yeah, so can you just, can we break down this simple scenario yeah. for people, now, and people's it, responsibilities it, it, it towards this, that? This ecosystem, data privacy and protection ecosystem, there are key players. One, the data subject, that is you and I, whose information is being collected and processed. There's a data processor that is who collects data and process on behalf of the data controller. There's a data controller who determines the way and manner your data with them will be used, like your telco, your bank, your hospital. Then you have the regulator, which is where government comes in, which is where the Nigerian data pressure comes in, in the case of Nigeria. Now, all these parties have key roles to play. Now, for a small corner shop, that you've gone there, you give your details to purchase something. So detail, the details you have given out must not be used for any other purpose. Apart from the original purpose that you are giving out such information. If it is used for any other purpose, it's a breach. And is there a penalty for that? There is. The, the, Even the, for a small business? For a small business. If you use the information of your customer, the manner that you have not declared, that is lack of transparency. Because the lawful basis for processing data must be transparent, must be fair to whoever data you are collecting. And there are some principles guiding this, which is part of data minimization. That is, you don't collect more than what you need that data for. Purpose limitation. You don't collect beyond that. Security that we put in place, the kind of storage, availability of the data, all these are things that you have to ensure that you put in place. So if you are collecting my data for the purpose of the fact that I want to buy something from you, and the transaction ends there, and you did not declare to me when I was starting that transaction with you that, sir, after this transaction, I would like to send messages to you just in case we have new products that will be of interest to based on what you have bought from us. I said, okay, I don't mind, you can. That's okay. But if you don't declare that at the point of collecting that data from me, that means you are not transparent in your activities. So we can take you up. And that is why awareness is really key here for data processors or controllers to know that the limit to which they can use any data within, them, within their database. And for data subjects to know that if you use my data for any other purpose, apart from the purpose of this transaction, there may be problems and the penalties. And penalties, it ranges from 10 million up to 2% of the gross earning of any organization that is involved in data breach. Hmm. And for some, the CEOs may be prosecuted and their jail terms or fines specified in the law. So a lot of organizations in the public sector you're thinking, oh, if there's any issue, if the organization is fined, I'm not going to pay for reports, government will pay. We'll go for that to even prosecute you. 
And that is why the level of awareness we are creating in the public sector is really high, because we discover that the level of compliance in the se public sector is very low as compared to the public sector. If I were we started, it was just 4%. But we now went ahead to obtain a circular from the Office of the Secretary of the Government of the Federation. There was a, a, a guideline from the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation mandating all ministries, departments, and agencies of government to comply with the provisions of the law by developing their privacy policies, appointing their data protection officers, working with a data protection, licensed data protection compliance organization to take them through compliance. Register with the commission, the Nigerian Transportation Commission, and file the annual report of compliance with the commission. These are things that we go through if there is any breach, because because of an accident, nobody is perfect. If there was an accident and a breach is reported to us, we need to look at all these things. Your ROPA, which is your record of data processing activities. How have you collected this data? How have you protected this data? How have you processed this data? How have you stored this data? Who have you shared this data with? What are the encryption requirements that you have in sharing data with your third party? They don't even declare the data, data subject they're going to be sharing the data with the third party at the point of collection. All these are things that we thoroughly evaluate before we can issue penalties or fines in case of data breaches. So thank you. Now that you've mentioned data breaches, I know we've had a couple in recent times you know, within within Nigeria, is there any one that you can highlight and you know explain what the commission did and what are the lessons learned from that? Also, um, you know, um, recently the FCCPC fined a couple of organisations, um, some were major social media or digital media sites for you know data misuse. Um, how does the commission play a role in things like that? One, on the issue of you know the breaches and the lessons learned, and two, you know, in ensuring that you know, especially companies with such a large scale, do not keep taking Nigerians and their data for granted. Uh, the, the, where there's any breach, or if any breach is reported to us, the first thing we do is to write to the organisation that is involved asking some basic questions to look at their level of compliance to the provisions of the law, which is the Nigerian Transportation Act. If we evaluate their response, I will now go further to look at their ROPA, which is the record of data protection activities. It's not like a driver running a traffic light. The offense is running a traffic light if you are stopped by the police or any law enforcement agent, the first thing that is your driver license. Some may even now go further to ask for your vehicle particulars. Some may have for your extra tire. Some may have for your sick or short. Some may have for your... You can start asking for it. So when we receive such uh, reports, look at your data project, we now go really deep into your data project activities. Looking at the lawfulness of your activities, Look at, looking at the fairness, looking at the transparency, looking at the measures that we have put in place to possess such data, the extent of the damage will not be evaluated based on what we have put in place. They will look at the impact of the data subject, how many data subjects are available, are affected, and what factors have you taken what measures have you taken to mitigate, to stop the breach and to mitigate the effect? We look at all these things holistically before we do a penalty. Between where we started and now, what our main focus has been in the area of one, awareness, two, if there are breaches, if it was not through due to negligence, we tell you to pay a remediation fee as a company. I will take through compliance and monitoring for six months. Because the most important thing to us is not about the big fines. Compliance becoming the culture is primal to us. We don't see it as if it is what I have to do naturally. They don't need to be forced to do it. It's only when you are not really cooperating or you are not willing to obey the law that we can go all out 
to issue a penalty. But in most cases, what we'll be doing, we'll be issuing reputation fee, pay the technical to compliance. The ones of the big social media platform they measure, which is better, the version was actually started in 2021. We were still under the DA. We had a joint committee with FCCPC and we started the investigation together. It was on uh, WhatsApp. Uh, it had to do with WhatsApp uh, privacy policy. The kind of policy they have in Nigeria and what they have in other countries. So yes, we were fully involved in the investigations. However, there are some other grounds which were still investigated. And not that we were able to finalize and conclude on that. Can we also only define that? This is, but the one that FCP issued, yes, we are fully involved. But that does not stop the other grounds that we are truly evaluating. And we are doing this with other, so many other platforms too. And you know, investigation takes time. Those of them just start now, and we did two months to say we want to conclude. Unless if they are not major cases. If they are major, and you are looking at five, six, several issues, you take each of them, do your proper evaluation, check thoroughly to ensure that you are not do the wrong thing. I look at global best practice, where it happened before, the kind of decision they've taken, the kind of measure they've taken, before you arrive and give a final order. So that is where we are. That. But we are doing more of awareness and we're looking for, it's only when we have tried our best to ensure that you comply, you don't, we can now hit you. And that will start happening very soon. So what if the breach, and this is another question, like what if the breach is um, from a government institution so, for instance, a couple of weeks back, you know, there was this report, um, not completely substantiated though, that some of the, you know, data providers or aggregators for NIMC, you know, were misusing people's data. If it's a government organization that do has this breach, what would be your role? Because people need to know that the laws are not just meant for the private sector and you know the citizens alone, they need to be able to hold their own government and public institutions accountable. And yes, I've heard you say you're doing a lot of training. You've increased the awareness from 4% to where it is currently. You know, you're helping them, you know, train and ensure compliance. But what if it's a government institution? Either you're a public institution or a private institution, the law is the law. It has to be obeyed, it has to be enforced. The case that you mentioned about Nipsey, when it was actually not reported to us, we heard, and what we did was to write Nipsey, and we don't even limit it to Nipsey. We write, we wrote to major data processing entities in government, we wrote to Nipsey, we wrote to immigration, we wrote to road safety, uh, Federal Revenue Service, Population Commission, IDEC, we wrote to all of them asking for their level of compliance to the law, giving us a report on their data processing activities. And we have been visiting them one after the other to do a thorough evaluation. In case of uh, Nipsey, we actually shut down some of their regulation platforms during the course of the investigation. We sat with the top management of Nipsey for almost a whole day. At the office with our top our technical team, our legal team, and there was what subject. I was there, DJ of Nipsey 2 was there. We reviewed everything. And where we needed to do some things in terms of trading, advice, them, and everything, we did. And we have commenced a kind of uh, collaboration which was started already in training and stuff. And investigations are still ongoing. So if they are found to be caught, people definitely we usually the appropriate against them. But for what we've seen so far, just that I need to put in place a few things and that was what we're doing with them now. The same thing with Alec, well, with Alec too. We start with them, even the chairman was there, all the, top, all the commissioners were there. And what they have to do in terms of compliance, we, we, they've started work on it, and some other organizations like that. So either government or public institutions, we are, we are within the law, so. so... So today, if my data is or has been breached, or I think my data has been misused by an organization or another person, how do I go, how do I go about reporting it to the agent, to the commission? So many ways, so many ways. You can write a formal letter to us, physical letter, and submit at the commission here. You can go to our social media platforms, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn, we're on X. You 
can follow us and report to us there. You can even go to our website, www.ndpc.gov.ng. You can lodge your report uh, to us through all these platforms. Or you go to the right informal bill to info at ndpc.gov.ng. You get an instant response as soon as you report to us. So we're available. You can reach out through all these platforms. I will take it up immediately. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. And that takes me to international cooperation. Nigeria does not live in isolation of the global community. I'm aware that there are global frameworks like the GDPR and other, you know, maybe the African or European, you know, data protection regulations. Um, how is Nigeria aligning our data policies, you know, in line with these international frameworks? And two, um, does international cooperation play any role in the activities of your commission, especially concerning like cross-border data flows and the rest? Thanks. I, I think the, the world, as we keep saying, the world is not a global village. There's no way any country can live in isolation. More importantly, with the level of development and deployment of digital technologies. And why, that's why we keep saying the, the global digital economy and uh, we are part of this process and it's a part of why the issues around data privacy and protection, they are really important and germane to all countries of this world. And if you recall when I started, I said the scope of our law, it was tends to data controllers and persons that are not doing anything in but outside Nigeria, but possess the data of Nigerians. The question would be, how do you want to enforce your law in a foreign okay. land? And that is why we are working with a lot of DPAs, data protection authorities across the globe. We are currently working with the Information Commissioner's Office in the UK. We are working with Ghana, we are working with Kenya. We are we open discussions with Singapore, with Canada, and uh, FTC in the US. So these are all organizations in charge of data protection protection that we have uh, working with in the area of knowledge exchange, that is sharing knowledge, Bushwa legal assistance. In case there are things we need to investigate in their countries, we need to enforce in their countries. It's only through this platform that we can work. In addition to that, there is this network of African data protection authorities. All African countries with their data protection laws, national legislation, with their dependent data protection authorities. That's a network a platform where we all meet, and there are about 30 of us now. Nigeria is now a member of that uh, network, and it, it, it's, it's a thing of joy to say that Nigeria is hosting them here in Abuja by May 2025. Mm -hmm. We won the hosting rights at the last edition that was held in Nairobi, Kenya, this year, and uh, we bid it, and uh, we won the hosting rights. So we are bringing all African countries, the international laws and authorities to Abuja. And when such meetings are held, you have multinationals coming to your country, you have investors coming to your country, you have solution providers coming to your country, you have professionals, experts, in data privacy coming to your country, you have government from all over the world, representative of government coming to your country to look at what you are doing in the area of data privacy and protection. That is one major thing that we are doing in the area of collaboration with uh, foreign uh, uh, organizations. Also, there is the Global Privacy Assembly, made up of more than 30 countries. These are countries with their data protection laws and data protection authorities too. When we started as a bureau, we actually applied to join that uh, group, but our application was rejected. Immediately our law was signed by Mr. President, President Paul Abed on the 12th of June 2023, we applied by August, our application was approved. So we are proud oh. to say about the 130 countries globally that have their data protection laws and data protection authority, Nigeria is a member of that platform. There are several working groups where you share knowledge and uh, in terms of investigations, knowledge, research, peer review, and so on. I speak to the fact that Nigeria is ready for digital business. One of the major drives of Mr. President is to attract foreign direct investment to Nigeria. Most countries now, where you don't have your national legislation and independent data authority, they are not willing to come and do business with you. 
But with that law that we have in place, a lot of foreign investors now see Nigeria as a country that is trading. Because if there is anything with their personal data, either of themselves or their staff or their organizations, they have a law that can defend them. They have an organization in terms of the regulator that they can run to, to see for recourse, which is the NTPC. So in terms of trust and confidence in the Nigerian economy, this law has been able to do that to us. And these are things we are doing with uh, the international bodies and uh, development partners. A lot of them have been coming to work with us in one way or the other. And the good thing about our work here is that our law is now being said as the most progressive data pressure law across the globe. We are still new. When we are doing it, we did a lot of engagement with stakeholders. It does not work. So we the draft law with stakeholders, multinationals, private sector organization, private sector organization. We make sure that we involved everybody. And in some countries that if they want to do any uh, develop any, any regulation, they will still have to go to their parliament. Our own law empowers us to do regulations. All we need to do is to go through a rulemaking process. Some of these things, in terms of cross-border transfer of data, which we mentioned, there are a lot of issues around this one in terms of data sovereignty, data localization, data residency. If some people will misinterpret this concept. Now, data sovereignty, it gives a country the power to have control over the data of their citizens, whatever that's data is. That speaks to the law that you have which covers the protection that was built in place for a lot of citizens. Data is that is where the data resides. Mm-hmm. And data localization is saying, yes, all the data in Nigeria must be made local. But the actual practice, is it possible for all the data to be made local? Where you want to sit, right in the comfort of your room, to buy things, to make purchases on Amazon, you have your medical, uh, consultants, maybe the UK, the US, you want to speak to it, he has your records. How can we ensure that we keep that local? So what we have done in our own law, and part of what is original to us, to data classification. That is, what kind of data must remain local? What kind of data can we share? Data, your names, the telephone number already, more or less in public places. Yes, you'll be able to share. And the most important thing is that if companies, organizations, multinationals, if you are doing cross-border transfer of data, we need to ascertain, yes, the country that they are sharing such a data to and put in place safeguards for data they are sharing to your country. And that is what we are referring to, the adequacy decision, which the RTPC should take on behalf of government. And what we do look out for when you are taking adequacy decision on the country, enforcing data subjects rights, national legislation, Data Protection Authority, independent, the kind of code of conduct, certifications, standards of plastic crosses, uh, business corporate rules, anything or code of conduct, anything that you can put in place that will guarantee that yes, where you are sending the data to is safe and secure. In Africa, we are talking of African Continental Trade Agreement, which is like having a single digital market for all African countries. That is cross border to our data. If you are saying there must be localization, so any data that is moving under that data agreement, how do we now, what do we refer to that, uh, how do we now classify that? The relate that means you move from UK to Nigeria, US to Nigeria on a regular basis. That cross border to our data. And that is why we put data classification in our own law. But for specific ones, we may have to look at. We don't have to take the adequacy to ensure so that appropriate safeguards are put in place. That's interesting. So you've said quite a number of things. One, you've expanded on the future proofing of our regulation, our law as it is. You know, giving you the free hand to you know make tweaks to it as the, as time goes by without having to go back to the national assembly. Absolutely. You've also mentioned how important it is to have these partnerships with international organisations and how it helps to even protect the data of every Nigerian citizen, not just the government, you know, even better. And I've heard you talk about these partnerships, but one thing struck me was, you said it was not until President Bola Ahmed Sinubu signs this regulation, this law, 
that were finally accepted into the global body, even though we had applied before. So it, it was obviously a step in the right direction. Absolutely. Beyond the president signing the law, how has government, you know, worked with you to ensure that, you know, you can achieve your mandates or your vision as an organization? I, I think the major thing is for you to have an instrument to operate with. When we were set up as a bureau under the former administration, it was done through a presidential directive. So there were a lot of ambiguity. Without a law, would you be able to perform your function? Would your actions be backed up by any law? And we had a lot of challenges in doing that. So one major thing that happened that really caused the turning point for us as an organization was the signing of that bill by President Bola Ben And the, the aspect that I would say is unique about the president. The fact that this law was actually passed by the Knight Assembly before he came. One of the last laws they passed, but the law was sent back to the former period on the 26th of May. Because of arrangements around transition, Hadi Duma and Solar, he couldn't sign before he left. So a lot of us were in a kind of dilemma then. How should we proceed? The level of work that had gone into this, drafted this law, workshop in it. You can imagine a law scaling through the two houses, Senate and House. And the point of that happened, and we're like, well, let's try. We could only send it to the new president where they came in, because he understands the powers of technology. He understands the powers around digital identity, and the need to protect the interests of citizens. We did two weeks of coming to office. He came in on the 29th of May. He signed this law on the 12th of June, less than two weeks. It speaks volume. And to lie, that, that was a turning point for us. And we now have an instrument to operate. In terms of reputation, it changed our reputation really. In fact, the law actually transitioned the bureau to the commission. We were operating as a bureau, but the law became a commission. And within the international community, we now get proper recognition. Oh, you have a law, we can accept you, you can work with you. So they were like, oh, a bureau, not, you don't have a law, just a regulation. So that really opened a lot of opportunities for the commission. And that is the most important support I think any organization can get from a government. It all depends on the kind of plans you want to put in place. I want to enforce the law, I want to make it work. Uh, more importantly, our old ecosystem is new. A lot of people don't really understand what you're talking about when you're talking about their privacy. And that is why awareness is really key. And when we saw that it was low in the public sector, we got a circular from the head of uh, Office of the Secretary of the Government of Foundation, but they tell FDA to comply. And that is one level of support again, which has led to the level of compliance in the public sector now. And on our part, we visited more than 100 MDAs to create awareness and to realize that we now have everybody with some of them. For example, we have uh, with the Commission, we have with Smedda, we have with the uh, NITT area, we are drafting with a lot of other organizations now. Everybody that will guide our journey with them. We will be like up last week and we are even going to states now. These are the strategies we are deployed to ensure that we get more support from the public sector and from government. And to a large extent, we are making progress. I hope this also covers a lot of government initiatives because too many initiatives are coming up that have, like, even in the Ministry of Communications, for instance, the 3 city program, a lot of people's data will be needed for that. You have a lot of social development Respect and programs. Impact. All these, we have, we have written to all of them to ensure that. So you have done your best in mainstreaming data protection absolutely. and privacy in into, into government absolutely. Absolutely. activities. Yes. Um, so thank you for everything you've said, but you've spoken of so much hope. And it's obvious you and your team have the capacity. 
because you've been able to break these things down into all the different plans. actionable plans that you have. However, what are the biggest challenges that you think or that the commission is actually facing? And are there any opportunities or what opportunities do you see for Nigeria to become, you know, the leader in data protection in Nigeria? Do you think that is possible under your watch? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think the major challenges we have, they are just normal with any new organization. If we are starting your own private business, you have to go through the, uh, the initial stage of ups and downs in terms of funding, which is really big job, in terms of capacity of your staff, expertise, professionalism that you need to develop. And the one thing with this acquisition is still fresh, it's still new. It's like hot in the market to engage some people. You train them and level up becoming experts. You rely on them before you get their goal because of the condition of service, because of better pay, better reputation in other places. Between where we started and I, about several of our staff have left. That's why we invested them so much to train them and stuff like that. But we're trying to. And I keep telling them, well, it was. If we can be a platform to develop expertise in this sector, why not? We can, we're happy to do that. And one thing that has really come out of that is the fact that since it's still new, it's still green, and there are opportunities for us as a country to take that lead. Mm -hmm. So in the area of job creation. In Nigeria, we have identified about 500,000 data, co data controllers and processors. And what the law says is that each of them must have a DPU, not like the police station, data potential officers. And those of us who are experts, who are certified data protection officers in Nigeria, we are now up to 5,000. Wow. But we are proud to say that in this commission alone, we have more than 15. There was a day that we had 11 of them getting their certification as data protection officers. Now we are less than 5,000, and there is a provision for 500,000 in the law. So there's a huge gap of 495,000 jobs waiting for us to. Take up. So what we're just trying to do now is one, create awareness, two, trade people. The one we can support with certification, we support them. The one that can do for them to do their certification, we are, we are happy to help them. Because certification is expensive. I did my, I wrote my exam, the trainer exam with over $1,000. I've been telling with $100 every, every year. That's about $1.7, $1.7 million. How many Nigerians can afford that? What we have not done is to demonstrate the certification process. Mm -hmm. We have licensed the national certification body. We have licensed data protection compliance organizations. They take data controllers and processors through compliance and submit their report to us. What we have added to their scope now is to be able to train data protection professionals, prepare them for the national certification exams. So instead of paying like 1.5, 1.6, it has come like about 700 or three about the trading and certification. And the good thing about this is that in terms of objectives, in terms of principles, in terms of basis for processing data, in terms of all the things you need to know, they are the same all over the world. If you know all these things, all you need to do is to do what's to the law of anywhere you want to practice in the world. So we want to prepare Nigerians to serve the market in Nigeria and work in different parts of the world. About the people that left us, two of them are currently abroad working as data pressure officers based on their expensive Gates from us. So it's a very huge opportunity for Nigeria. Look at our population and the level of unemployment. This is what the question that is coming to help solve that problem of unemployment. So I appeal to all Nigerians if you have your world's, your people around you who are unemployed, this is a, a sector that is ready and able to employ them. All we need to do is do your training, do your certification. However, we need to know that certification does not confer competence in you as a person. After your certification, you need to constantly read, interact with your peers. And we are trying to have, to build a faculty within the commission that if you are a certified data protection officer, where you can pull resources from. If you are at the point of working, you have questions, you need clarifications, because you can turn that faculty for clarifications, and we're happy to support them at that level. So this is one huge opportunity that is open to us. And before, between when we started and now, we have built an ecosystem that is worth 10 billion right now, in terms of the businesses 
that this ecosystem is generating. As I said, we have licensed DPTOs, less about 194 of them, who are now offering services. Each of them will get between five and ten staff. So it, it's a huge opportunity for Nigeria as a country, and Nigerians, the people of Nigeria, that we can take up, take the lead in Africa, and make a part globally. But it's still a completely new area that a lot of people don't know about. And this is one ecosystem that's created a huge opportunity for people, for jobs, for expertise, for interaction with a lot of professionals across the globe. A lot of requests come to us every day. Even, I think, in two weeks' time, a delegation will be coming from I think, Somalia to study, to understand the house, of what we are doing, the way we drafted our law, the setting up of the commission, and a lot of other countries too have approached us. Uh, they are happy to come and study us and look at what we are doing. As we are doing too, as I said, we visited ICO in the UK. Very soon we went to Canada to also look at what they are doing. So other countries too are coming to see us to understand what we are doing. So it's 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 a huge opportunity for us as a country. And a lot of people to come here and see Nigeria, not all the negative uh, news here and there, to see Nigeria the way we are as a country and as a people. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Olatunji. Um, I'm more than excited. Coming here to this interview, I never knew, you know, that the breadth of your work was this wide. And I'm happy that you've broken it down into bits and pieces. And it's given me, as a Nigerian, confidence that my data will not be misused. And in the event that it's misused, I have the Nigerian Data Protection Commission you know, to run to, to protect my rights as an individual and as a citizen of Nigeria. Do you have any final word for Nigerians, you know, before we conclude the interview? Uh, thank you. Yeah, the, the, my final word would be that in Nigeria, as you speak, we have that reputation as a country that we are ready for digital business. We are your rights, your freedom and your interests will be adequately protected. And to say that we are all involved, it's not about government alone. The POS operated by the road side, the agents of uh, MLOs, the corner store, pharmaceutical store, the, oh, everybody. Even the betting companies. The betting companies. The Babai Jebus. The Babai Jebus. Schools, <laughs> institutions of learning universities, all universities. Primary schools. A lot of churches and mosques. All of them. They have the duty, the whole, all citizens, that duty of care to ensure that they protect our personal information. And there are consequences for not protecting such information. And that is why I want everybody to take it as our business, your business, my business, to create awareness. And to let everybody know that at data subject, we have rights. And there are specific provisions in the law to preserve and enforce your rights on your behalf. So all the tax controllers and processors, they hold us that duty of care to say that they are accountable for every data of a every Nigeria within their custody. All of us should work together to have a safe and secure economy where everybody and every person coming here to do business who have trust and confidence in whatever we are doing here in Nigeria. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.